I'm standing outside the D.Y. Patel Stadium in New Mumbai, just outside the limits of Mumbai, for a very special occasion. The final league match day of the inaugural Women's Premier League. This is a stump special. I'm Sharu Sharma, delighted to be here in Mumbai for it. The excitement is palpable. Outside the stadium, there's plenty of noise, traffic noise as well, but every once in a while it does compete with the massive roars that emanate from the D.Y. Partle Stadium, indicating that not only are there a lot of people outside the stadium still looking for a ticket around the middle of the match, but plenty of people inside the stadium enjoying the action. Here's another roar of the Tata WPL. Maybe not that loud, but uh, it's great to see that the Indian public has taken fabulously to the action of the Women's Premier League. A big occasion for all women cricketers in India. And of course, those stars from overseas who've come to show the way and inspire young Indian girls to take to the game. Every once in a while, of course, I do hear from Alison and Jim that you're inside one of the stadiums and I do feel, oh boy, I wish I was there. And I look forward to uh, more on the WPL with you, Alison and Jim. from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and All India Radio. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news, features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. Well, this week, as you can hear, we're coming partly from Mumbai for the climax of the inaugural groundbreaking a Women's Premier League. I'm Alison Mitchell, though back in London, we couldn't not send Charu along to experience the WPL and get amongst the players in its very first season. Uh, outside of the WPL, though, it's easy to feel dispirited about the way the ICC board is operating at the moment. A closed shop on its recent board meeting uh, on Monday when the women cricketers of Afghanistan had been told by Chief Executive Jeff Allardyce back in January that their situation would be discussed. Now, you'll recall last week we heard from one of the players after they'd made it known publicly that they had uh, escaped from Afghanistan to Australia. And they had some very fair questions they wanted answered by the ICC as governors of the game. Today, silence. Simply told that there will be no media summary of the board meeting sent out and no significant decisions of note. So we have asked for more, but we're left questioning if the Afghanistan women's letter was even discussed. So that's a little wider afield and we'll keep on top of that. Uh, in the meantime, though, we are very excited to hear from Charu uh, even more about his escapades at the WPL. Hello there, Jim Maxwell in Sydney. It's either stinking hot or it's raining. But the cricket season at home is coming to an end. As we've noticed in India, Australia have won the one-day series there. The WPL's moving into the finals. And the Sheffield Shield, do you remember that? The finals taking place between Victoria and Western Australia. OK, now it looks like Char is back in his uh, hotel room. Over to you, Char. <laughs> yes, I am, Jim, and I see you're wearing the Aussie yellow, and you should, because you won the series in India after a while. This is Charu Sharma for All India Radio. I am back in a hotel, and I am here for the Women's Premier League, which is making plenty of waves. What is uh, a little disappointing, or what was, uh, was India going down to Australia in the one day, and especially Sky, that Surya Kumar Yadav, who did so well in the T20, is getting it three golden ducks, which is probably a world record, especially for a top-notch batsman. So there's plenty of lament on that front, but I'm sure that all of the Indian women cricketers, particularly in those from around the world, are enjoying the fact that the WPL has been, I think, uh, a resounding success, if I might say so. We've waited years, haven't we, for the Women's Premier League. Uh, finally, we've been able to see some of the biggest names in the sport playing alongside and against each other in the biggest cricket-loving nation on the planet. So, Charu, the hope uh, is that this tournament will really benefit the Indian national team uh, in the future? Without question. Uh, uh, although some, of course, haven't quite been able to perform. Maybe the pressure of expectations. Smithy Mandana, particularly the captain of RCB and, and the most expensive player, uh, it's strange how sometimes the most expensive player gets a sort of a jinx and <laughs> tends not to do well in these leagues. But also, I think Deepthi Sharma, such a big star, otherwise a great all-rounder, has been strangely quiet with the bat and a few others whom you'd expected a lot more. Uh, in contrast, of course, some new names have emerged. But yeah, I, I caught up with the Indian all-rounder, Shikha Pandey. And uh, she sounded very confident that the Women's Premier League will lead India into, or the national team of India, into more success and hopefully the World Cup itself, which they've missed so narrowly in the past. 
it's amazing to be here i guess this is a uh, very similar to st- international standard with the experience and exposure that we have during this women's premier league it will just keep the indian team in good stead and uh, probably will go on and uh, win that world cup title to the point of of exposure and learning the wpl obviously like the ipl earlier is so important for indian players who have not played international cricket how is that working out Yes I mean we have a great bunch of youngsters in the side uh, and also uh, honestly the past one and a half years that I was not there in the India team I've actually played domestic cricket and I've seen how hard the domestic players toil and I am so happy that a lot of them who have put in the efforts during the domestic circuit have gotten the opportunity to come out here and play and it's for the world to see that our domestic circuit is so good that we have so so many great players and the tussle and you know there's so much hustle in the domestic Sick place as well. Uh, a word, perhaps, on your captain, who, of course, internationally is the winningest captain. Has that helped? My team, Meg. Yes, of course. Uh, I have again picked up a few things from her. How calm she is, calm, confident, composed. Probably. So that's the capital tagline. Probably. <laughs> so I have learned a lot from her. It's about backing your skills all the way. I guess at this level or at international level, everyone is the same. potential and talent wise it's about how you take up take things mentally so the mental setup and mental part of things is a huge learning for for me when i've spoken to her but well, shikhar tell us a little more about the fact that you're also now retired would somebody believe this uh, squadron leader in the indian air force uh, what was that journey all about the person i am today is because of uh, all the qualities uh, that i imbibe from the air force training and i served for the indian air force for 10 years i wanted to be a pilot and i also wanted to play cricket so i would say i was very blessed to be the proud owner of the jersey of the blue jersey and i was able to don the blue uniform as well one of those fortunate ones so indian air force um, air force sports control board in particular had to bend their rules because i was the only officer who kind of uh, debuted for india and represented india yeah. as you may have noticed i saluted you when you walked in <laughs> yes, <laughs> you must be I used did. to that uh, you know for a while everything worked for you you were with the air force playing cricket for india and then i don't want to spend too much time on this but if you will talk us through some of that dark period you went through for a year year and a half when you left the air force to focus on cricket and then weren't chosen for uh, the internationals in in india so talk us through the whole period and and your learnings there i've had fair bit of ups and lows i'm uh, to be very honest i'm not someone who's very talented i've always believed in my hard work and i think as a kid growing up i always believed that dreams don't turn to dust and hard work never goes to waste so it was a difficult period for me also i was falling out of love for the sport and i realized that i needed to do something uh, to get back in love with the sport i got in touch with belinda clark she's a legend of uh, a women's cricket all over and i had a few sessions with her her leadership playground course that i did really helped me and then as a pre-season routine i went down to australia played club cricket sometimes when you are playing professional cricket you're just thinking about the results and you forget about these small little uh, joys of life so from then on uh, having fun has been the first uh, thing on my to do list and that's what i'm trying to have here as well so every time i i, I look at a youngster who's not enjoying the sport or being grumpy i just tell them to enjoy the sport you played domestic cricket in australia and of course in india as well uh, early in in a uh, short while back as well in goa are there essential differences that you'd like to point out which maybe can help uh, indian domestic cricket grow uh, because australian cricket of course is right on top with cricket always being the the only sport that is played in india it's a religion so sometimes uh, i i think the players do find them under immense pressure as a 12 year old kid i was talking to a 16 year old kid the other day and their parents wanted them to play for india in like one or two years and i just told them i started playing cricket professionally started learning how to play uh, cricket professionally with a leather ball when i was 18 in my second year of engineering so i said she literally has two years of uh, upper hand over me i mean just give them the time that they want and uh, give them the freedom uh, of you know choosing what they want to do so that's one thing i mean i think the pressure that's put on the youngsters is immense here if i am a 5 year old kid today and i'm watching my cricketing idol on tv every day it's just making me dream bigger but also it's just giving my parents a signal that she can take up the sport professionally shikha thanks for talking to us and good luck thanks a lot thank you for having me so india and delhi capitals all round at shikha pandey jim shikha was talking about the world cup and saying we will probably go on and win 
that World Cup title. And given Australia's dominance of the women's game, I mean, how long before India does take it from them? Oh, probably next time. And uh, as we saw in South Africa, Australia was run close on a, a couple of occasions as they put in a very confident performance in the final. So it wouldn't surprise me if it happened at the, the next World Cup because uh, that's how fast the game is developing. Charu, just give us your take then on the first mm. ever WPL, your overall experience of it uh, on the ground in India. Anything that you didn't expect, anything that you've particularly enjoyed and, of course, where it can evolve to? Well, more teams for sure, I think, in the future, because it's been a tentative start and a start that came 15 years after the IPL for the women now. So uh, apart from that, of course, we've talked about moving to different geographies. That's going to happen as well. There were two very important things for me to indicate the success of the WPL on a wider level, on macro level. One, of course, was the closeness of matches, because nothing fires the imagination of fans uh, as a close match does. You know, last ball here, last ball there. So of that, there haven't been too many, which is uh, a bit of a disappointment. And the second thing I mentioned, which was very important for the larger goal of the WPL, was lesser known Indian players to star. And that too, unfortunately, hasn't happened because 90% of the time, I'm, this is a rough calculation, it's been the overseas stars and a couple of other Indian major stars, major Indian stars who've done all the, the heavy lifting in all the matches. However, that's a little harsh because it's only season one. And I have no doubt that they'll come in larger numbers in the next few WPLs to show that India too does have the kind of depth that Australia does. I think Jim alluded to that because ultimately uh, a game is only as good as the depth of the players in that game. I mean, I would like to see, Char, I think, like you, the expansion across different cities. And I'd also like to see the free tickets for women to attend Correct. specifically. For yes. the moment. And then I've just really loved the sheer investment in the women's game and the reward for the players. And when I think about World Cups that I've covered going back to 2005, 09, but 2013 in Mumbai itself, which was a tournament that was poorly promoted and sparsely attended, well, from 2013 to 2023, what a difference a decade makes. From the BBC World Service, this is Stumped on All India Radio. So I was lucky enough to get to the Taj, which is uh, the Delhi Capitals Hotel, and uh, talk to none other than their captain, Meg Lanning, who's had a terrific WPL. So here's Meg on her thoughts on the WPL. It's been it's been a lot of fun, you know. Coming over here, it was an exciting time for the, for the game, and it's turned out to be everything that I I looked forward to. You know, it's been great to be able to join with the Delhi Capitals, a great franchise who have looked after us really well, really well set up, and you know, as a team, we've been able to gel really nicely and play some really good cricket as well. So so far, so good. You played around the world and other leagues as well, T20 leagues. Uh, is it possible to compare what the WPL is to you compared to all the rest of the uh, franchise cricket you played? Oh, it's, it's on another level. A pretty cool experience just embracing it all. It, it, there's been a lot happening. It's been obviously put together in a short space of time, but it's it's been really well put together. And um, for me, coming over here, I just wanted to embrace, um, you know, what, what India brings um, and what the WPL brings as well. And, yeah, it's, it's certainly been next level to anything else I've experienced, both uh, in the way it's been set up and also the, you know, the fan engagement. There's been some really good crowds, quite a nice relaxed feel to it as well. Um, you know, I feel like you can really enjoy your cricket over here and, and really just have fun, embrace it, um, take everything on, say yes to everything and um, you know, just uh, you know, embrace the experience. If you were to uh, seek some improvement in the WPL, this is only the first year, we've got to be kind to it. What would you like, uh, in addition, say, to what's happening already? <laughs> It'd be nice to be able to play in, you know, sort of travel around and play in your, your home cities and really experience the, the home fans. Um, I've heard the Delhi fans are amazing. So, um, you know, I think that that's on the cards potentially moving forward. I think the fact that it's in one spot this year probably makes sense. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing in front of some big home crowds in, in Delhi, hopefully um, in the years to come. Well, sticking with the Women's Premier League chair and what Meg said there about wanting to see in future it expand to the different cities, is that an inevitability? Does it have to happen for this tournament? It was a good spot because it may be an obvious spot, the fact that uh, the inaugural WPL is only in Mumbai because Mumbai does have the luxury of uh, three major cricket stadia like perhaps Colombo and maybe a couple of other cities in the world. But it has to move. Uh, it was probably just a safety thing uh, to begin with by the Cricket Board of India that uh, let's just sort of do it in a more controlled 
uh, condition in, in one city. And the impact will multiply because there's so much to be said about a major event happening in your neighborhood, in the proximity, because it just sort of fires more of the fans up. Not just the fans of that area, but everybody sort of feels a little more connected to the tournament. Jim, I've got to ask, uh, I don't know about the timing because well, there's always a timing problem in Australia, New Zealand, uh, in terms of viewership. But has the WPL created enough attention in the women's cricket arena, particularly or in the cricket arena in Australia? Most of the attention, obviously, has been around the performance of the Australian players, particularly Ash Gardner, who received all that dosh up front and yet really didn't do much to start with. And, of course, Meg Lanning now that uh, the Delhi Capitals are through to the final. Jess Johnson's left arm spin bowling. So there has been a little bit of coverage. More news than live because of the lateness of so many of those games, which you can watch. But you also have to remember that as we get to this period of the year, our football tends to bang m most other sports on the head. I'd say it's been patchy, really relying on what the Australian players are doing or not doing uh, to uh, to attract some sort of coverage. And uh, Alison in England? Yeah, I'd say similar, really. If you're a follower of women's cricket, you will have been seeking out the WPL to watch matches, though uh, most of the games are behind a, a paywall. Um, the general sort of sport websites, you know, overflowing with the Premier League, which is in full swing, has been the Six Nations rugby. Um, there's been lots yeah. of men's international cricket being played at the same time as well, which is still sort of getting the, the mainstream coverage. But in terms of the domestic news, if an England player does particularly well and there's a story and there's features being being done around them, um, it's certainly you know, grabbed attention in that sphere. And of course, the, the auction, as Jim alluded to as well, that, that did make mainstream headline news because of the sums involved and just how groundbreaking um, it really was. Well, that is all we've got time for on this week's Stumped on All India Radio. Don't forget you can follow us on Twitter. We're at BBCWS Sport and use the hashtag BBC Stumped. And check us out on YouTube as well. Go to the BBC World Services YouTube channel. Thanks to our roving interviewer on the ground in Mumbai, Charu Sharma, and to Jim Maxwell, and to all of you for listening. Join us again next week for our 400th episode. Until then, bye-bye. Stumped is a BBC sport production for the BBC World Service in association with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation and All India Radio.